Hello everyone and welcome to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. Hey Rebecca. Got, hey, how are you? Good. We're really kicking this off here, Since I know. Last, uh, last fall, I it think. It has indeed, it has indeed. But this is really fun to be here in San Francisco with you at Snowflake, my first ever Snowflake. Seems like it's a, there's a lot of energy in this room. I'm super excited they're back here in San Francisco or in San Francisco. You know, for a while they did, did Vegas and you know, really supporting the city, so it's great to see. Indeed, indeed. Well, I'd like to welcome our first guests of the day. We have Prasanna Krishnan. She is the Senior Director, Product Management, Collaboration, and Snowflake Marketplace. Of course, that's Snowflake. Thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE, Prasanna. Thank you for having me. And Moham Araf, he is the CEO of Relational AI, another CUBE alum, so thank you both for being Hi, here. Hi Rebecca, Hi Dave. Great to see you guys. Good to see Good you again. Good to see you too. So Molan, I want to start with you because Relational AI is all over the place, right, it feels. There was yeah. mentioned in the keynote by Benoit. Um, tell us a little bit about, about how Relational AI is using Snowflake Marketplace. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, a um, life-changing experience for us as a company, you know, whenever uh, you're, you're doing a, starting a company and taking something to market, you have to have two things. Uh, you have to have a great product, and that uh, we know how to do. That's something you control, right? And you also have to have distribution, because a great product without distribution is not going to have any impact. And so this, this uh, you know, uh, model that we've been implementing with Snowflake, where we plug in inside Snowflake, is where a uh, knowledge graph co-process just co-processor to Snowflake has been super well received by Snowflake customers because most Snowflake customers are happy in a net promoter score, Christian talked about it today, super high, and they have spent some, some time moving all their data in Snowflake and now they want to build intelligent applications on Snowflake, uh, kinds of applications that Sridhar and Benoit were talking about, and the last thing they want to do is move data back out and have to re-govern it and re-secure it and synchronize it and have, go to a, a different architecture that's not cloud native, different paradigm that's not relational. So customers love it, and when the customers love it, it works for Snowflake and for us because Snowflake has a $1.2 billion sales and marketing machine and they want uh, you know, customers to get value and so they push us in that machine and of course we benefit because access and budgets and security and all of that is friction you don't have in the sales process anymore. Persona, the, we learned from the cloud players the importance of not only ecosystem but also marketplaces. Yeah. So when you think about the Snowflake marketplace, what are the sort of what can we learn from what you learn from the cloud, and, and what's different about Snowflake marketplace? Yeah, it's a great question. So you know, if you think of your phone, um, you have the if it's an iOS phone, you have the App Store on it, and what this world of apps did for the mobile phone was it really amplified the value of the phone to you, several orders of magnitude. And that's similar to what we see with the marketplace, uh, the Snowflake marketplace on the data cloud. So with partners like Relational AI, building these really powerful applications um, that need to operate against a company's data. Uh, and what the data cloud and the Snowflake marketplace enable them to do is, get this compute or this application to the data as opposed to moving the data around, exactly. um, as you said. And, and that is really powerful for our customers um, and, and it enables them to run the application, seamlessly give them access to the right data, control what data the application is able to access, um, and, and really also be able to procure it via the marketplace and really simplifying all three steps of that journey, finding the application, procuring it, and then getting giving access to the application to use your data. So carrying the analogy through a little bit, so I asked Sridhar this, you, you see yourselves as iPhone for data apps, not Android, iPhone more integrated, and he said, iPhone but faster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Malham, it, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to explain to the audience the power of your technology. Uh, George, you know, George Gilbert and I have, have profiled you guys, the, the expressiveness of a graph database with the query flexibility of what we've known to SQL, right. advancing that sort of knowledge graph concept. Why is that important and how do you see that affecting the market generally and in, in intelligent data apps in the future? Yeah, I appreciate the question. So we, we heard uh, Siemens, for example, today mention about how they wanted to collect the aggregate knowledge in Siemens. And, uh, and, and be able to leverage it, right? And so I thought that was a very, uh, we don't work with Siemens yet, although we're going <laughs> to go and approach them after today. 
Uh, but I think this sort of that's a very compelling vision for all enterprises, right? And so if you're going to bring the applications to the data, you're going to bring business logic to the data. And business logic historically has sat in application servers written uh, in procedural programming languages going back to COBOL and more recently Java and C Sharp and things like that. And that business logic is opaque to the business person, okay? Because it's written in code. And what business person is going to understand Java or, or COBOL, right? And so we're, we're, what, what our knowledge graph makes possible is that moving that sort of the semantics that are encoded in business logic into the data cloud so that you have the, 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 those semantics expressed in the same paradigm as data, which is the relational paradigm. That's why we're relational AI. And so this is a really breakthrough uh, capability where you're bringing the, the semantics, the business logic, and the data together in the uh, data cloud, and you're infusing, and you're making it possible through uh, our support for uh, predictive and prescriptive and graph analytics and rule-based reasoning, you're making it now possible to answer questions about what's going to happen and what to do about it, which is what you're trying to do as a business person using a business application. SQL is awesome at what happened, what were my sales, how many days of vacation did I take, uh, you know, things that are uh, uh, descriptive in the past, but if you're making decisions, you need to make a prediction about the outcome of that decision, and you need to uh, uh, prescriptive analytics to help you uh, pick the decision that's going to maximize profit or revenue or customer satisfaction or minimize risk or all of those things. So together we make that possible. I, I, Prasanna and Rebecca, I don't want to take away from <laughs> monetization yeah. in the marketplace because it's very important, but I want to follow up on that because we're envisioning a whole new world of, of applications, intelligent data apps, as we've talked about, yeah. Mohammed in the past. That business logic, that's, that's not something that Snowflake is you know, historically owned it, but so it's going to be created by a new, new breed of, of applications that is going to, we think, completely disrupt the old breed of applications, even those, those will be around forever I as well. I completely agree. Okay, so <laughs> that whole notion of business logic and data coherence and the semantics, those are sort of, sort of new to the, to the snowflake yeah. world outside when you expand the, the market you know, dramatically and then yeah. we'll get into the marketplace, but how do you see that all playing out so that the, 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 the different apps see the data the same way, that it's coherent. Yeah, I mean look, I, I, none of this is possible if you don't have the Snowflake AI data cloud as a foundation, right? Because historically the reason we had to chop up our applications into a lot of uh, pieces with lots of different databases driving lots of different application, you know, and sort of application-centric ar architecture is we didn't have a platform that scaled and that was as well integrated as Snowflake, right? Now it's all in one place. So, and it's extensible through Snowpark Container Services and, and, and native apps, so we can innovate by plugging in our uh, knowledge graph, relational knowledge graph innovations, and now we can make semantics live right there with the data. It is really game-changing, right, as enterprises think about doing what Siemens was talking about earlier today, it sort of rethinks the whole model from an application-centric model to a data-centric model. And that you can't do without a data cloud. So Prasanna, we know that organizations are buying AI applications and, and then trying to figure out how they, how they build on those applications and then monetize what they build. Can you talk, talk a little bit, there's been a dizzying array of new announcements, refinements, new features. What exactly is new here and why they're so important for customers? Yeah, absolutely. So one really important announcement today that we made is native apps working with Snowpark Container Services, right? And uh, this is now in public preview, and this is a really crucial announcement. Um, along with that, we also announced the ability for you to monetize your native apps using a new mode of charging for it, which is the ability to price per credit. So what Relational AI can do is, you know, charge a certain dollar per credit that is being used by the Relational AI native app running on the Snowflake AI data cloud. Um, and that is really powerful because as a consumer, I pay for exactly what I use. Um, and as the provider of the application, Relational AI doesn't have to worry about how do we meter and bill. Snowflake takes care of all of that. Right, and so monetization is really important and we're really simplifying monetization for both sides, for the provider, because ultimately you need to make money, and for the consumer, right? We're really simplifying the process of, of paying for the apps that you're using. What's the appeal to devs? Pitch me, I'm a developer, <laughs> even though I'm not a developer. Yeah. Why should I develop on, on Snowflake and using these 
new services. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really simplifying every step of that development journey for you as a developer. The first is the build step, right? We're making it easy for you to build. We had a lot of announcements today around things like you know, notebooks and, and um, uh, making the, the whole data pipelines declarative and so on. The next step is being able to deploy it and distribute your application um, using the Snowflake native app framework and the Snowflake marketplace to reach 10,000 plus customers on Snowflake. And then finally, it is being able to make money from it, um, as well as being able to ma monitor your application, being able to see what's working well, where do you need to you know, look at the logs to understand where there might be errors or bottlenecks and, and immediately address that, right? Um, so we're really simplifying this entire development lifecycle for you um, as a developer and helping you make money. Are you sold? Well, I want to have a follow-up question okay. before I'm sold. So I, I'm trying to understand what Snowflake is. So it's a data cloud. Actually, now it's an AI data cloud. Yeah. Right? It, it is because it's no longer a, a cloud data warehouse. That's like yesterday's news. So it's evolving you know, quite dramatically. It's also an AI platform. Mm -hmm. It's also a platform for developing intelligent data apps. Yeah. I guess it's all of those things. If I asked you, is it, a, is it an AI data cloud, is it an AI company, is it an application development platform, you'd say yes. It is, and I think all of this go back to the central innovation that Snowflake started with, which is the ability to separate storage from compute. Right, that's what enabled us to do analytics without limits in kind of the first phase of Snowflake, and it's that same innovation of separating storage from compute that is enabling us to do sharing of data as well as sharing of applications and bringing applications to the data. And, and AI is just a natural extension of that. You know, you can have an application uh, that can be an LLM or it can be an AI uh, application that's using AI under the hood, um, and we're able to bring that to the data using the same core innovation of separating storage and compute and bringing the compute to the data. And now, I would love for you to comment, Malham, we're seeing the separation of, 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 of compute from not only storage, but from data. You see this with iceberg tables, you see you know, open table formats, yeah. and it just opens up a whole new opportunity yeah. of, of data. How do you think about that, especially in the context of monetization? I, well, first of all, I want to say I'm sold. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's great. I mean, this push to open formats, and you know, a Christian referenced it in the talk today without naming uh, the 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 one st holdout company uh, that wasn't uh, all in on Iceberg today announced that they're in all in Iceberg. So that I think establishes Iceberg as the right choice, right. And, and Snowflake made the right choice. Uh, and it's just more openness. And the, the beauty of this model is really, it's just value to the customer, right? Because the customer feels good about being able to hold all of us accountable for uh, doing right by them and creating value for them. And if we don't do it in an effective way, et cetera, they can just move uh, their analytics to someone else. And when the business logic is also relational and it's also independent of technology because it's expressed declaratively and relationally, right? They can move business logic too. I mean, just think, I, I, you know, we've talked about this before, just think about like the last 50 years of our industry, mainframes to mini, to micro, to client server, uh, to cloud, to data cloud. Every time we transition, we rewrite everything. And business people are super frustrated because IT all, you know, seemingly all it ever does is rewrite the same old stuff instead of writing new applications that have intelligence in them and really uh, adding value to the business. And so with this move, data formats are open and with us, semantics are open and people can write it once and um, you know, move uh, to the right technology and the right implementation. One of the, one of the frustrations with this, and I wonder if you can help, help us solve this in the Snowflake marketplace is, you know, not really knowing what apps are available, yeah. and you know, can read the reviews, but there are a lot of those are fake. How do I find and, and squint through all the stuff that's inside the marketplace? Can you help me with that? Can Gen AI help me with that? Yeah, absolutely, and we actually talked about some of this today. Um, so, you know, there's only very few times that you're actually going to go and browse the marketplace. You're often, you know, in your interface, uh, and we want to make it easy for you to discover what you need, whether it's internal to your company or from outside, when you need it. And so we talked about universal search, a single search bar that enables you to, uh, you know, go and ask a question, like I want to build a knowledge graph on my customer data, um, and ask a natural language question, and it'll show you 
the relevant internal data for it, but it'll also show you the relational AI app um, as a search result. And, and now I can go and click on that and learn more. I can also uh, immediately start trying out this app because this is the key innovation that uh, native apps on the AI data cloud bring over how apps have been built in the past. In the past, if you had an app that you wanted to better understand and play with, it took you days to get IT to approve even just provisioning that app for you to play with it. Now with Snowflake, you can instantly start trying this app and so Relational AI can have a, a portion of their app be available to you for free to be able to try right away um, or even try for a certain amount of time. Um, and now you can not only discover it but actually get your hands on it, play with it instantly and then decide um, to use it. And then I can use my credits. Yes. If I like the freemium, I can say, okay, this is great, I've tried it and then you get paid. Explain why that's not um, a negative for Snowflake. I, I know the answer, but explain to the audience, because we went through this with cloud. Oh, well, AWS and Snowflake compete, but it turns out, actually, you, you, you help customers you know, create more value. Yeah. Explain why that's not a threat to you. Uh, why, uh, so, I mean, we think that, as we talked about earlier, having all of these applications amplifies the value of the data cloud to you, mm -hmm. right? Because it is just like the phone analogy. The phone is so much more valuable to you because you have all these apps on it and you can do much more than just make phone calls. Um, and, and we believe that, you know, with partners, partners like Relational AI, we are bringing that amplified value to our customers. Now, talking specifically about the monetization model where Relational AI can charge per credit, what we're really doing here um, is saying, if you think of it as a triangle, there's Snowflake, there's there's Relational AI as a provider, and then there is the consumer, maybe AT&T, who spoke at the keynote about how they're using Relational AI. Um, and what we're doing is making it easy for AT&T to be able to pay for how much of Relational AI they're using against their Snowflake data, using the same model that they use to pay for Snowflake, right? And so there are two pieces here. One is the way Relational AI charges for their app. So instead of charging a monthly SaaS subscription, what they're doing is charging per credit that the app uses. And the second is for the consumer, the payment method. And instead of you know, setting up a new wire transfer, they're able to pay using the capacity dollars that they have committed to Snowflake. Yeah, I don't have to go through the whole procurement process, as yes. you said. And Whatever underlying cloud is there, you're hiding that, you're abstracting that complexity away. Yeah. So, good. everybody wins. Yes, absolutely. Everybody wins. So being here at your, this Data Cloud Summit, what are the kinds of conversations you're having, uh, that you're talking to your customers and your partners, and, and what are you going to bring back with you when you are back at work on Monday? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, look, I, this is uh, my third summit and the second summit where Relational AI uh, uh, attends as a company. And uh, we stopped having a top of funnel problem, a demand problem, <laughs> going back to the previous one. And so this is really the only event we come to uh, because uh, Snowflake has almost 10,000 customers as of the last earnings report. And they, they all could benefit from what we do, right? And we uh, obviously are all in on Snowflake and making sure our system works really well in this environment because of all the nice things that they do for us. So uh, I think it's just, you know, uh, we have a, a channel in our instant messaging and we have people going around taking pictures of, uh, of tags and getting names. And the first thing we're going to do on Monday is just go through the list of all the conversations and reach out and, uh, and start, you know, engaging with the customers, so. Yeah. And for me, the big takeaway is you know, enterprise AI, right? Which is AI is cool and exciting, but the ability to, do, to have AI operate against my enterprise data with the security and governance that I need, that is really resonating uh, with customers and it's really exciting to hear that. What do you each, I know we're out of time, what do you each want to be able to say next year at Snowflake Summit 2025 that you can't say today? Oh, I'd like to announce, you know, a thousand customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was going to say, uh, we didn't plan this, but I was going to say that we would love to say that we have driven, you know, we've already driven millions in revenue for partners like Relational AI. We would like to say that we've taken that 10x, 100x, right? And so our interests are totally aligned and we that's said the same exactly. thing. That's good, add a couple zeros. Yes. Yes. The era of enterprise AI has arrived. Yes, that's right. we're living it. Has. Excellent, Absolutely. well, Prasanna and Mohan, thank you so much for joining us. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Great conversation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca thank Knight. You. For Dave Vellante, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.